So we are on the Divine Discourse number 62, 16th of June 2020, Sharvari Nam Samvatsar, Uttarayan, Grishmurutu, Jeshtamas, Krishna Paksh, and Ekadashi. It's a Tuesday today. Now yesterday, Lord Krishna has been telling Arjuna, even highly knowledgeable people, intelligent people, they also get driven away by their tendencies, that is the vasanas. So even if you try to oppress or hold, what will you gain? But that doesn't mean that you have to stop. So here, now this being the case, Sri Krishna again comes back to the a point. He says, he clearly explained, yes, even the mightiest of the mightiest people also, they get carried away with this. So you need, really you need God's grace and your Purushartha. Because what is coming as your Vasanas are nothing but your past tendencies. So now how do you regulate them or how do you overcome them? It has to be by your Purushartha, your effort. And the wonderful story of Bojraj and Kalidas. When Kalidas asked Bojraj, Hey Rajan, you are a versatile king. Very rarely people are blessed with both Lakshmi and Saraswati. And you are such a person good in all respects and one thing I can see a big uh, untoward quality in you is the gambling quality then Bhojrat says what can I do these are my vasanas very strong vasanas of my previous birth I am not able to control them and how did the transformation happen eventually it is a lesson which we have to learn over here. Whenever you want to give up something, if you find a reason at an upper level or a higher level or a higher cause, then it becomes much easier to give up. Like a, say a mother, She is trying to save money here, there, here, there, wherever she can. Why? She knows that her daughter is coming. And she wants to spend on her daughter. That is the love. Now she has a tendency for maybe, let's say she has a tendency for going out for coffee or for ice cream or whatever such kind of things. But she says, no, I want to save. Now the cause is higher, which is the love for a child. So similarly, now Bhojraj, what he found the king, he said, how can I allow such a sannyasi to roam around in my kingdom, doing all such nonsense? So for him, the kingdom and the values of the entire kingdom were more important. And it struck him. Yes, no. Now I must give this up. I cannot uh, live with such kind of people being in my kingdom. I need to correct this. And that's how we brought a change. So one of the primary reasons what they say is, you have desires? Okay. You can't stop desires, isn't it? Now, divert the desires. Instead of stopping them, see that they are diverted for a higher cause. For some better things. 
Now you have a desire all the time you are watching Netflix, Amazon, so many other channels. You want to see TV, primarily want to see TV. Now there if you say let me start watching Ramayan or Bhagavatam or Mahabharat, maybe you are watching for two hours, let me watch at least half an hour these great epics. You learn something out of those epics. So likewise, you need to gradually give a, a flow to these tendencies. And then he moves forward to the next verse. So this is verse number 34, Karma Yoga chapter 3. Indriya Indriya Syarthe Raga Dvesho Vyavasthito Tayor Navashama Gachet Tauhyasya Paripantino So now, previously, Lord Krishna said, yes, mind and all the senses are extremely strong and very difficult to bring them under your sway. I, I understand what you're saying. But then he further adds, he says, do you know Arjuna? These senses, they have a natural tendency of raga, desha, like and dislike, aversion and attachment to sense objects. But he wants him, be careful, Arjuna, be careful. They are your greatest enemies. How they will conquer you and how they will take you out of your path, you will not even realize. You will realize only when a debacle has happened. Like many a times when we are when we are walking and they say the floor is slippery for some reason it could be some uh, oil or some other thing and you are slowly you are walking trying to be careful but you will realize you have fallen only after you have fallen that fall is sudden so he says the these your sanskars, your tendencies are, you already know by now, they are deep rooted. But unless and until you make up your mind and have a clear understanding that these are my enemies, you will not be able to counter them or take care of them. So that is one very clear indication, it says, they will hijack you just like that. Because they are Raga Dvesha of Prakriti. Now the objects are prakriti, made out of Prakriti, Pancha, Bhutas. Your senses are made out of Pancha Bhutas. Your mind is made out of Pancha Bhutas. So they all have an affinity towards them. They all want to get together, make merry, enjoy. Be careful. He says, being alert and vigilant living itself is sadhana. This was told by our Puja Gurudev. Being alert and a vigilant lived life is sadhana. How can we do this? Now we know, yes, I have. Now what is this Raga and Dvesha? Raga is which I like. 
which i like meaning what i do i go chasing what i like i want that so even if it is not coming i go after it and besha is what i don't like so what i don't like meaning i go away from it now see the reverse happens raga what i like in life most of the time it happens what i like and i go after it those objects they go away from us they go running they don't even come near you and what you are running away they keep chasing you they keep coming towards you that is the force it works the other way so you have to know that these are just those decoys highway robbers they just come loot you and go so now how can this prabala what we call as paripantino these enemies how do i counter them so the first step is when they come you be you notice them oh this these have come second is be vigilant and thirdly what you should do make it a practice keep a limit i know i have a liking for this i know that this has come my raga it has attracted me towards this and i am vigilant now what i can do at best is instead of giving up i am going to put a control and also say that this is the body which is given by the lord it is not for your sensual enjoyment over here you are the trustee of this body use it and return it with minimum wear and tear what is acceptable wear and tear like when you go abroad and you you hire a car now you want to travel you want to travel some 2 3 000 kilometers or 4 000 kilometers and you hire a car and you are driving on your own so what they do they initially they just take the pick of the entire car all across all around the car and then they confirm with it from you that see there are no scratches anywhere this way that way they take a clear understanding you and they both have they have and then when you return it back there is definitely it has run for 3000 or 4000 kilometers so there is a wear and tear and what is the wear and tear it is on the tire that's all a little bit of wear and tear on the tire other than that there should be nothing else if there is any damage anywhere any scratch anywhere any dent or anywhere then you have to pay for it meaning you have not used it in the appropriate manner you have abused the vehicle you have gone rough with it so here we have to bring that attitude oh lord this is your your asset i am a trustee over here let me return it back to you with the bare minimum damage i can do to this and that is my love and worship for you see now there even if you want to eat or enjoy something which is not appropriate for you with these attitudes you can change otherwise you want to put a stop that will not happen you have to what is going in the wrong direction allow it to turn let that momentum be there let it slow down allow it to turn slowly and take it in the right direction so lot much about is spoken on these uh, issues we'll move forward very interesting then the next verse 
so now the lord lord krishna says so conquer your raga desha taking the help of the god your guru your shastras and he says okay now let's discuss of some tools how you can do this let's understand more about this and then think to counter about these tendencies verse number 35 श्रेयान स्वधर्मो विगुण परधर्मास्वधर्मे निधन श्रेय परधर्मो भयावह शिहर द लॉर्ड सेस देर इज वन मोर एंगल टू इट वॉट लैपन you are doing a particular activity in life your main activity like you could be a professional you could be an employee you could be a businessman you could be a homemaker you could be in social service various things now what is happening here you are in some activity or the other suddenly what happens you look at somebody and you feel are what that person is doing is much more fascinating why should i not do that why should i not behave like that person why should i not become like that person these are the kind of thoughts also which come to your mind so one by one he is talking he spoke about raga dvesha he is speaking about this earlier he spoke about your tendencies so wonderful psychological all aspects are covered over here what is the psychology of a person what all could a person be undergoing in or in his or her life so how do i treat this kind of a situation i think i would have been better if i was like him or her so here he says if you notice in this particular shloka dharma has been used four times no where a word has been used four times in a shloka dharma 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 so what does this mean the root word of this word dharma is dri dharan karane yogya whatever duties or work patterns or even you can say your thoughts in your mind all these what are appropriate for us now how do you arrive at this so here another word is known as swadharma so your personal dharma swadharma what how do you derive at this so the lord says don't go by your caste or religion that if i am born as a brahmin i should be doing this uh i should be studying vedas scriptures then doing pujas home havan karma kand upasana kand or gnana kand whatever all these various spheres of the spiritual uh, world and if you are a kshatriya 
not that you have to be a ruler you have to be an administrator and if you are a vaisya not that you have to be into trading into business into money matters finances and shudra is who assists all the other three these are the tendencies by religion now this aspect is something which is very wrongly understood in the country it all came during the britishers time where they wanted to bring a kind of a, a split in the uh, in the people and in this society so they went on making these divisions as per birth but lord krishna in future chapters he explains your strength is not decided not by your birth but by your talent see in the same family you have seen brothers and sisters they all have different tendencies somebody has love for music somebody has love for finance somebody has love for uh, scriptures each one has got their own strength no although they are all born in one family so lord krishna says don't go by that you understand what is your swadharma you are good at what you are good at studies take up studies you are good at admin then take up admin in krishi take up krishi but never at any point look at anybody else and say i should be like him or her and start changing your track maybe that person in the field other than what you are doing must have achieved marvelous results like you and he or her must have grown together and the other friend of yours took another path and you as per your swadharma you took a path but thereafter don't think on those lines that i should now change that becomes para dharma and that is not going to do good to you arjuna follow your swadharma once a crow looked at herself or himself and said what is this here from top to bottom i am so black what is this nothing else i don't see anything else other than black in me when does it get this feeling when he sees a white swan wah what a swan color completely white so beautiful now it goes to this swan and talks to this swan and says i wish i were like you looking so beautiful white everywhere white now this one says my dear friend what is this your one single color from top to bottom look at the parrot green and red beak wow look at it i am fascinated by the parrot if we you know want to be i would like to be like a parrot and then they both go to the, the crow now goes to the parrot oh ho swan is saying parrot let me talk to the parrot at least compliment the parrot yes i am really amazed to see your beauty two colors you look so good now the parrot says my dear crow what is this two colors one red on my beak and the whole body in green look at that peacock all the colors are there in the peacock so beautiful it looks i wish i was a peacock now the parrot says i wish i was a peacock oh my god 
True. So they go to the peacock. The crow now goes to the peacock. And he says, Wow, you look amazing out of the world with your colors, your tail and your body. My God, I wish I was like you. Now the peacock says, what, just because of that I am put in a cage over here. And everybody come and they look at me. And they take pictures and they go. What did I get? I am like a slave here, no? Going around up and down, up and down. And whenever they give to eat, I have to eat. If they don't give to eat, I don't have anything to eat. Only this small area is my world. What independence do I have in life? I wish I was a crow. I can go anywhere, eat anything, do anything what I want. That is freedom and that is life. So likewise, the crow understands. Now it says, oh my God. I have gone to everybody and finally it comes back to me as everybody is saying is good. So in life what happens? You may look at somebody, yes they may be driving a better car or they may be living in a better apartment. They may have some more luxuries in life. It may look good. What appears to you is what looks good from your point of view. But you should see what exactly they have, they have lost in life. It's not that easy. Now look at this recent Sushant Singh Rajput. I know it's discussed too much, but here it is relevant. When, go back a bit, little bit and see, at some point didn't we think that, wow, what a life you must be having. We must have thought at some point, no? That he is really lucky. But we do not know the inside story. In, in the lives of so many people, like you all must have heard one of the greatest fashion designers, Kate Spade, in Manhattan. This happened about two years back. She committed suicide. You must have heard of the world's master chef, Anthony Bourdain. He committed suicide. If you look at their success chart, amazing chart, not one or ten or thousand, ten thousand, lakhs of people would have been inspired by them and would be envying their life. There are so many people like this. So never look. Look at your Swadharma. What is given to you is what God has given me. That's all. Not even you, your body, your mind also is not yours. It is God's property. Who are you over here? Whatever you are doing as a dedication to the Lord all your offer, all your actions, all your thoughts, all your vasanas, whatever are there. Oh Lord, I don't know what I have done in the past. This is what and where I am. Now I am, I have decided and determined to change with your grace, with this knowledge what I have now, I am surrendering to you. That's all. Now the very purpose, the very first shloka which we are bihearting is moha. Delusion, wrong understanding of yourself, people around and the world. You are saying, yes, I know that there is something wrong. I want to get corrected. That is the first step towards major transformation or transcendence. We have started with that now. I hope all of you have 
join the chanting group which we have created separately where you will have all the shlokas every 3 days 4 days once we update so you will be able to revise the previous ones and the new one previous one and the new one so that's why we have created a separate group so there will be nothing else in that group no other postings and you don't have to keep swiping up and down or everything will be one below the other and will accept put it in our mind yes i am deluded i do not know so many things about myself we are all ridden by this raga dvesha we want raga meaning what i want i have to get if i don't get i get dejected everything has to happen to me in my life at the right time who told you that just because it has happened to somebody else that doesn't mean to say that that good thing also has to happen to you you are writing a different examination everybody's question paper is not the same in life so what we do we try to copy others but our questions are different we have a different karmic account we have a different karmic cycle so we have to do it differently and what comes to your mind is you can only see the good what's happening in their life but not what is not there in their life in the others life so go by your swadharma and never focus on anybody else's success or situation however great it may be yes you you are a person who knows you will be growing thousand folds in your next life it's a combination now which has happened you mean to say this is a small thing what is happening has happened in your life now where well, the verdict of god has come to you which has never happened in several lifetimes this is the highest thing what can what one can aspire in life and the kind of dedication you people have amazing so with this we only need to put in our practice you have seen a farmer isn't it who plows the land he properly plows the land and he knows now my land the soil is perfectly in order in in the right shape and condition to for the germination of a seed if it was a hard soil and what we do we go there and we try to sow a seed inside isn't it and we wait for the seed to sprout but it doesn't come out why because the soil was not ready now in the same way without sadhana your mind is not ready to accept this knowledge that is the reason i'm focusing on sadhana so much because that's my personal experience how i was benefited i'm passing it all to you if i had just listened to what they had said i would have just forgotten the way i had listened but when you bring in sadhana along with it then it is like you have plowed the land and you see how joyfully the farmer he throws the seeds into the soil from a distance he is throwing he is singing a song and throwing and going you must have observed that he is not going and putting it there and trying to put some mud on it and all no he has prepared this soil so well that even if he throws the seeds from a distance he knows that they are going to sprout so in the same way we are farmers where we have our land and we have the seeds what is the seed now the seed of this knowledge so now the seeds are being given to you or or thrown into your mind now if that has to germinate properly you have to plow your mind without which they won't be the expected results so we have come out with an array of sadhanas which
expressing what we are trying to say, not taking the meaning of the shloka word by word. We want the concept of that shloka, moha. I want to I want to first tell, accept that yes, there is something wrong in me and in my understanding. I am open for corrections. So the next one, as I said, will be surrender. We surrender to the Lord. Next shloka. And that way we'll bring in more and more good things. And all of them will enter into our subconscious mind. And it will never allow you to commit mistakes. And with that, the cleansing of the vasanas will also happen. See what a kind of transformation will happen.